Hello and welcome to Crutchfield Live, everybody. It is uh, Thursday at 4 o'clock. Every other week we go live, and uh, we are live now. I've got a guest, Tony. You may remember him from last show. How are you doing? Doing good. Thanks for having me again. Thanks for coming back. Happy to be here. Good deal. Uh, we are going to get into some stuff today, like talking about uh, the installation we did in Tony's Mazda 3. Uh, he's been living with that for two weeks, so we're going to find out what that's been like, how he likes his new stereo system. Uh, if you're watching this live, please shout outs in the comments. Uh, if you're on YouTube, right there in the chat. If you're on Facebook, right there in the comments. We have people monitoring those while we're live, feeding them to me. So hopefully we can uh, we can uh, you know give you a uh, shout out when you give us a shout out. Retro VHS, I think you're our most consistent viewer. Thank you for being back every week. What's up, everybody? Says Retro. Uh, still wreaking havoc says calling all car and home audio junkies. That's what I like to hear. Tell your friends, uh, please uh, share it out. Let them know that there is a fun show all about audio and video in the car and in the home going on right now. Uh, we're hanging out talking about fun stuff. Bruce is back. Good afternoon from Syracuse. 1980 is back. Hello again from Lansing, Michigan. Ole Dutant. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, <laughs> that system makes you want to drive more. Uh, I hope you're talking sure. about the system in Tony's car, right? Yeah, not wrong. Not yeah. wrong. You, I, we're going to talk more about you want to drive more. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get, we're going to come back to that. That's great. Uh, so keep the comments and the shout outs coming. We'll try to acknowledge as many as we can in the live. If you're watching this later, when it's no longer live, you can still post questions and comments there. We do keep track of those. We monitor those, and somebody will respond to you uh, if you need a response to your comments. So uh, we'd love to interact as much as possible with anybody out there watching. And like I said, like it, share, tell other people about it, uh, and uh, yeah, help us grow the audience for Crutchfield Live. We think we're doing a fun thing here. We'd like to do it with even more people. All About Rush says, what's up, y'all? Thanks for watching. Today, up, you like Rush? I said, what's up, Rush? What's up, Rush? <laughs> Uh, here's the plan for today. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, a brand new sweepstakes that will launch during this show. Uh, we are going to be giving away more stuff. We're going to tell you all the details about that coming up here in a few minutes. Uh, we're going to talk about multi-room wireless audio systems like Denon Hios. Uh, and by the way, those two topics go together, foreshadowing for you. We're going to uh, listen to and play with the Denon Hios app uh, and show you how easy it is to operate a wireless multi-room audio system. We're going to bring Francis, uh, one of our smart, home, uh, smart home gurus, in, and he's going to sort of take the lead on that. And we're going to talk to Tony. That's actually where we're going to start. Uh, and then later in the show, we're going to talk about, we're going to look at some hashtags. If you've tagged uh, hashtag Crutchfield in your social media posts on Instagram and such, uh, showing off, you know, the stuff you've installed, whether it's car audio or home audio or anything you've bought from Crutchfield, we'd love to see it. Uh, tag us in those and you might get featured on a future, future Crutchfield Live. We'd love to see the products that we talk about every day. We love to see them in action. Mm -hmm. in their natural environment. Mm -hmm. Where they belong. Exactly. Uh, we've also got a poll question for you. This one is car audio focused. Uh, the question is, what's one thing you would replace or add to your car audio system? If you could only do one thing, maybe you're gonna do your system in stages, right? What would you do first? Would you A, replace the speakers, B, replace the stereo in the dash, C, add a subwoofer or replace a factory subwoofer, or D, add a dash cam or backup camera, of a camera of some kind. Uh, which of those would be your top priority if you are replacing or adding to your factory car stereo system? So uh, go ahead and throw your answers in the uh, comments on Facebook, and, uh, or is there a, there's a poll question, right, going on on both. We got actual poll questions. Uh, throw your answers in there, and uh, we will tabulate those results, and we'll revisit that later on in the show. Cool. On Facebook, Richard, Kevin, David, and Joyce all say hi. Thank you for watching on Facebook. All right, let's get into it, Tony. You're back. It's been I'm two back. weeks. It's been two weeks. Two weeks ago, uh, we had just the day before installed a pretty sweet stereo system in your car. What's the car again? Remind me what vehicle we were looking at there. I have a 2010 Mazda 3 hatchback with Bose. 
So the the car came with the the upgraded the premium audio system. That's right. And how yeah. did just remind everybody if you were watching in the last show you know the answer to this question but how did it sound before we did anything? Um it was good. I mean there was like a lot of depth to the sound uh and warmth more than I had in my previous car which just had like standard fa factory uh radio speakers everything. Um but it was missing some sound, literally. We found uh, t that the two front speakers were blown, unbeknownst to me. Didn't even know that. Like, Didn't probably were like that. that when you, how long had you have, have how long have you had this car? Um, I think I'd had it around six or seven months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Uh, long enough that uh, you kind of know what it sounded like, and but not long enough to realize that, hold on, my front speakers aren't even making any noise. I mean, there's tweeters, they weren't probably working yeah right uh, and your back speakers and the factory subwoofer which was in your spare tire in the trunk all of that was working so you had okay sound better yeah. than better than average factory sound even with two of the speakers totally inoperable yeah there's actually a speaker in the center dash too oh a center dash speaker which i discovered that's fancy yeah <laughs> what what do you, do you notice any particular sounds coming out of your center dash speaker um Mostly the sort of same frequency range as a tweeter is okay. kind of what I hear, like higher range, did higher your, end stuff. Did your factory radio do any fancy things like Bluetooth, hands-free calling, stuff like that? Yeah, uh-huh. And maybe that might have come out of your center channel. Sometimes that's the case. That, yeah, that might have been what it was for. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, and uh, we should also establish that Tony knows a little bit about sound. I do. Uh, what do you do like for fun when you're not here working? Like, What are you spending your time doing? Uh, making music and uh, particularly like mixing music as a mixing engineer. So I spent a lot of time with frequency and uh, sound. <laughs> so yeah, you know the ins and outs of like how to make music sound good, how to EQ things, uh, how to use a digital signal processing, crossovers, all of that stuff that a lot of people just don't ever bother with. You understand all of that stuff. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Good. Uh, so as we looked at your car and tried to plan out this install, we picked out some speakers, a stereo, a subwoofer, and an amp, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we just, you weren't, we weren't going crazy here. We weren't trying to build like the biggest system ever, Yeah. but trying to certainly make, uh, something that would sound a lot better than the Bose system. You can see us here. Uh, this is the, the, uh, Tony is in a sales training class, uh, with a bunch of other advisors. This is us in our install bay. Uh, doing a before listening and planning out the installation, looking at all of the information available on crutchfield.com. Plus, we have some internal stuff we looked at to sort of figure out what was the installation going to be like. This is us unboxing all of the gear that we actually went to install. There's our biodegradable peanuts, your new subwoofer, your new sub amp, mm -hmm. two pairs of Hertz Uno speakers, the brackets and the wiring for those, and the Boss BE62 CP head unit. And oh, we did ready harness. So we that's had right. our, uh, our guys at the warehouse put together your harness. Yeah. Um, so that's what we installed. And you know, we went to look and see what, was the what, what were the challenges we were going to be met with doing this install. And one of them was, how's this new system going to work with the Bose system? Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember, like, how, what did we determine that was going to do? Like, was it going to be a problem trying to use it with the Bose system? The the biggest issue is that um, the speakers that we chose to put in have an impedance of four ohms, and I think the factory amplifiers used to working with the speakers uh, that have an impedance of two ohms. So, yeah, yeah, two ohm factory speakers, and we're taking those out and putting them uh, putting four ohm speakers in their place. Right. Double the impedance, exactly. Which means you're going to get a little less power from the Bose amplifier powering those speakers. Mm -hmm. So why did we choose these Hertz Uno speakers? There's something about them that we liked uh, that made them a good choice. They've got a really high sensitivity, big so, time. Yeah, they're very efficient. They will make a lot of sound from a little bit of power, more so than most. So these are highly efficient speakers. These are the actual speakers we put. Well, these are the boxes <laughs> from the actual speakers that we put in yeah. the front and the rear of your car. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about how they actually sound now that they're in. We've put them in. Um, we had to we had to do some work to get the tweeter installed. Mm -hmm. uh, we put those in your sale panel. You had factory tweeters in those locations, mm -hmm. so uh, we were able to take those out uh, and hot glue the new tweeters in their place. They stuck pretty nicely in the factory bracket when we glued them in. Um, and now you've been driving the car 
You've had it for two weeks. You've been listening to these speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, look, there's you with the tweeter. Hey. That's the fact <laughs> tweeter coming out. Uh, how does the system sound now that you've uh, had a chance to really tweak it and listen to it? Um, it's great, honestly. Uh, blows any system I've ever had out of the water. Um, even though, you know, the issues with impedance with the speakers, there's still a lot of sound and a lot of power. And that subwoofer, like, really hits, you know. Like, uh, I haven't showed it to anybody that, like, wasn't impressed by it. <laughs> um, nice. Not that that's what it's about, but my neighbor, Chris, like, he's so into rap music. And I got his approval with that sub, so I got to... Um, <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> got to say, it's pretty nice, yeah. <laughs> uh, so these speakers are not crazy expensive speakers, right? They're uh, they're pretty affordable, actually. Yeah. Uh, and very efficient, so they're kind of perfect for what we needed. We were looking for a very affordable system that was going to sound better. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about the speakers themselves? Like, how do they sound? You, as a person who knows music and tone and... EQing and frequencies and all of that stuff. What do you think of the actual sound of these speakers? I, I think they're good. Uh, there's there's a clarity in them that, again, surpasses what I've gotten from factory systems. Um, and when I was EQing the system, I spent a lot of time uh, messing with the frequency, but also understanding as I mess with different frequencies are these frequencies coming out of the subwoofer or are they coming out of the speaker? Um, and so messing with the EQ, even though I don't have like a DSP or something that would let me tune those speakers specifically, I got sort of a feel for tuning the speakers themselves. And yeah, I'm impressed with the clarity and even though there's the issue with the impedance and they're not getting as much power as they possibly could, they still hold their own against that subwoofer um, and don't get drowned out too easily. That's an important point. Uh, we've seen a lot of cars where they the factory speakers were 2 ohm, and we have a note that pops up when you try to buy 4 ohm speakers for those cars. And a lot of people call us wondering, hey, what's going to be, I don't want lower volume, mm -hmm. because it's potentially a problem. If you install the wrong 4 ohm speakers in there, you might not get as much volume with your new speakers as you were getting with your factory speakers. Mm -hmm. and that's why it's important to choose the right new speakers. And so you're not detecting lower volume. You're getting... Yeah, not, um, in, a, not in a way that's like too bad. But I also, it also, I could hear, you know, there could be more there. And uh, it makes me want to put a new amp in my car already just to give those speakers exactly the right amount of power that they need. And they can handle more power, so you have the you have room to upgrade here. Yeah, and I because I, I'd like to hear what they can really do, um, basically. But cool. they, they sound good as they are. They really um, do. We're going to talk in a minute about how you are EQing the system, what control you have from the new radio. First, I want to get to some comments coming in on Facebook. Uh, Anthony says, hey, Tony, it's Tony from Long Island. What's up, Tony? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Metro VHS says, as someone who has been an audiophile since birth, LOL, worked in electronics sales for years in the audio department, I am one of the few people who will tell you straight up Bose speakers are lacking, and he's referring to the factory Bose speakers here in the in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Bose is a great. We sell Bose products. Uh, the Bose speakers that we sell, headphones, Bose weight radios, things like that, awesome. Mm -hmm. Bose factory systems. We end up talking to a lot of people that want to replace those speakers, or maybe the amplifier stopped working, things like that. And we have found it's not hard to put a better system in there than the factory Bose systems. They're mm -hmm. not. It's not quite the same as our aftermarket stuff. So. Uh, let's see here. Several people agree. Midwell, medieval 1980, but I, but I can also tell you that my Bose premium upgrade and my Mazda CX-5 GT sounds surprisingly good. So there, uh, Bose definitely does make some decent factory systems. Uh, retro VHS, thumbs up. Uh, medieval as, a, as they always have been, unfortunately. So they're talking Bose. You can't, if you bring up Bose on the internet, there will be debate. Like mm -hmm. it just immediately happens as soon as you say the word Bose. So... Uh, so let's, instead of Bose, let's talk Boss, uh, nice. <laughs> a brand that's actually confused with Bose a lot just because of the similar names. Um, but this is the radio we installed in your car. Here, I'll put it right there. Uh, so <laughs> this is the BE62CP, which is actually the least expensive CarPlay radio we sell. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's actually on sale right now. 
Um, it's late. It's normally like just over 200 bucks. It's right now on sale for $199.99. This is a crazy good deal. Mm -hmm. uh, that sale does end on July 31st. And right now you'll be ordering it on back order. We're out of them because it's been such a good deal. Mm -hmm. uh, but with the least expensive stereo that has uh, Apple CarPlay on it, uh, what kind of control do you have of the sound and are you happy with it and were you able to use that to tweak the system the way you like? Yeah, um, there's a 13 band EQ, um, which is infinitely useful. There's a subwoofer setting, so there's levels for the subwoofer, I think it's 1 through 13. Um, there's a filter for the subwoofer too. Um, and so those are the three things. Oh, and then of course there's the loudness button, which is something I had a lot of fun experimenting with. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, I uh, all the tools together really gave me a lot more control over the sound than I kind of thought it would. So um, I'm looking over the yeah. notes. The website says it has technically a 10 band EQ. Oh, 10 band. My bad. Guys. 10 band. Yeah, 10 band. <laughs> there's also preset <laughs> EQ curves. Yes. Did you did you go through those? That's like rock, pop, jazz, country. Those kind of preset EQ curves. Uh huh. Did you find any of those that you liked, or were you did you need to go in there and get it to you know fine tune it to your specifications? Um, I'm always gonna fine tune it to my own specifications just for fun, you know. Yeah. But um, since I do listen to mostly like rap, hip hop. I tried the preset for that one, um, and uh, it was good, but I like sort of uh, less drastic um, cuts and boosts on the EQ curve than what they put in the factory ones. Yeah, so factory, these, these are presets, right? Somebody presets. decided, hey, this is probably about the right EQ settings for rap music. Mm -hmm. And so it gets close, and if you don't know how to use an EQ, probably just use the preset EQs. Yeah. Uh, they're probably gonna be pretty good, but you know how to use them. Yeah. Uh, and so you were able to really fine tune those different frequencies to get them right where you want them. Yeah, I, sp I spent a lot of time just sitting in my car, uh, pressing the pressing buttons and making it sound just right. That's, yeah. that's the hallmark of a system that's sort of exciting. Uh, you spent a lot of time just sitting in your car, yeah. <laughs> tweaking it, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but your car has had some mechanical trouble here lately too? Yeah, unrelated to the sound system, but... Um, we didn't break anything when no, we installed no, your stereo? No, we didn't, not, unrelated, but my car, I had to, I couldn't drive it actually for about one week of the time that I've had it. Um, so instead of driving it, I just go out at night uh, with my buddy and sit in the car, listen to music, and mess around with the EQ, basically. I yeah. love that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have spent many hours in my driveway, sitting in my car, listening to music. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's and, a pastime anyways for me. So. It's, yeah, it's what, it's what we do here at Crutchfield. <laughs> uh, because, especially with a new stereo system, because it's like this car you've been driving all of a sudden has a new life. Yeah, it, it really right? does. Yeah, it really does. And it's a nice way, like, you, you know, you might have trouble even finding a new car to buy right now. Mm -hmm. So why not just upgrade the one you have, add new life to it, and make driving your existing car that much more fun? Mm -hmm. It definitely does make you want to drive the car more. I can't remember who said that at the beginning, but yeah, I was pretty upset when I had to sit it there for a week right after I got that, but... Still got to listen plenty. All right, we've got some questions coming in on uh, Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, on YouTube, I love using external DACs. How can I replace the auxiliary input in my 2011 Land Rover LR2? Uh, ooh, that's a good one. Uh, I'd have to look that one up in our database. I can't tell you just off the top of my head. Uh, if the auxiliary input can be replaced. If you're trying to replace it and keep the factory radio, uh, really it depends on what's going on with your factory radio. If you're trying to put a new radio in the dash, we can certainly put one in that has its own auxiliary input. We've got options. Uh, it really depends on what's going on in the Land Rover from the factory. Uh, I, would, uh, I would suggest, this is uh, Isaac Sykes 3. I would suggest that you call and talk to live with one of our advisors. Uh, the phone number is right on the website, or you can go to crutchfield.com slash contact. And anybody that answers, we can, they can look this vehicle up specifically in our database, see what's going on with it, see what kind of upgrades can be done. Uh, I would suggest that you do that. That would be uh, the best course of action. Uh, Still Wreaking Havoc says, I have a quick question. 
I'm purchasing an audio control DM608 from you guys. I was wondering if it comes with a microphone to adjust the frequencies or do I have to buy the microphone for $300? Uh, that sounds like an expensive microphone and uh, do you have to have it? That's the question. Um, Tony, uh, we have literally just within the last week trained you, like you're still in your first eight weeks of training. Mm -hmm. We just covered products like the DM608. That's the DSP. Yeah. Sweet. Um, so the full on DSP that you put this box in between either your factory radio or an aftermarket radio mm -hmm. and your amplifiers. Mm -hmm. And so if you're using, if you're installing new speakers and new amps to power your speakers, maybe a subwoofer, and you want to have a, a crazy amount of control of the sound from a computer or from a smartphone app, this box gives you that. Mm -hmm. That's what it does. So it's a DSP or a digital signal processor. And one of the things you can do with it, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is hook up a microphone. And I believe the microphone is indeed sold separately. It is not included. Let's go see here if it is an accessory for you. There it is, the Audio Control SA4140i. 41, uh, that is necessary if you want to put that mic in and have it do some stuff automatically for you to analyze the sound in your car mm. and like listen to how sound bounces around your car. Mm. You don't necessarily have to buy this to use the DSP and make it sound great. Yeah. So is it a required purchase? No, but if you want it to automatically sort of analyze your car, then you're gonna need that mic. And yes, it does cost 335, 355 bucks. Uh, and, uh, but look at that, five reviews on it, four out of five stars. So the people that have bought it mostly like it and think it helped. So uh, it seems like a good idea to me. Yeah. Um, one thing though is, one thing I've learned mixing music is at the end of the day, your ears are your best tool, you know, because that's what you listen with. So that's, I'm, not, I'm not saying don't get the mic. I'm just saying don't be afraid to do it. Well, with your ears. Th that makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. That you, you, your microphone isn't the thing that matters when it, at the end of the day, what you hear it with your ears, if you like it, it's right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so do you have to have it? No. Uh, <laughs> should you get it? Only if you really want that automated analyzation of your car's interior and where it can potentially fix some stuff. Cool. Uh, and, and Still Wreaking Havoc says, I'll try it with my ears first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. It's free to try it with your ears. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and yeah, if you still want more, we've got the mic for you. Uh, over on Facebook, Jerome asks, how do I set up a surround sound system with six speakers and no sub? Uh, interesting. So, a uh, like a home theater system or a surround sound system with six speakers and no sub, typically that's not what you would do. You would normally have either five or seven or nine or eleven speakers, mm -hmm. uh, and the odd numbered speaker is the center channel. Uh, and so you would typically have your front left and right, your rear left and right, maybe a surround back left and right, maybe two or four at most speakers, right? And then you have the center channel, which is that odd numbered speaker. And so uh, a six channel home theater system with no subwoofer is, uh, is not typical. How would you do it? Uh, you technically could put in a rear center channel and some receivers can take advantage of that, but it's not typically what you would do. Um, also get the sub. You're gonna be much happier with surround sound with the sub. Maybe you're in an apartment or something and you can't annoy the neighbors and a subwoofer would be too much. I get that. Um, but you can also turn it down a little bit. And then when you're watching a movie in the middle of the day when they're all at work, you can turn it back up. Um, let's see, Besker said, better late than never, just got home from work. Glad you could join us, man. Thank you so much. Uh, all right, let's move on to the sub itself. Uh, so, oh wait, so on the Boss Radio, safe to say, a $200, like the least expensive CarPlay radio, is it as good as you thought it would be? Is it better than you thought it would be? Is it not as good as you wanted? What What's your overall thoughts on the radio itself? Um, I mean, overall, I think it's good. Like, uh, it really feels good getting in my car, turning it on and seeing that screen come to life. Like, it's just like the color on it's a lot better than I thought it would be. Um, the car play is great, it's handy, it's really easy to use. The only issue that I've had with it is when I was messing with the EQ, 
when you're trying to move the sliders up and down, it's like the reactivity of the touch screen is not superior. So sometimes you're trying to kind of fine tune that knob and it gets a little difficult putting it in the right place. Not that you can't do it, it just takes a little longer than, you know. You just kind of got to get like. into the, the rhythm of the touch screen, mm -hmm, right? You got to kind of figure out where exactly on your finger moves it the best and all of that. Mm -hmm, Which, mm -hmm. yeah, that would be a little bit of annoying, right? But that's also, that's something you'll do the first few weeks of having the system. I would imagine at some point you're not going to sit there for hours tweaking the EQ, right? You're right. probably going to get it to where you know you like it. And then from there on, it's just the normal operation of the radio. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, right. yeah, so, I mean, it's a $200 stereo, so I wouldn't expect it to be, you know, like a $1,300 stereo where that touchscreen is absolutely immaculate and pinpoint accurate. Like, that's kind of, right. that's expensive to get that done as good as it can be done. Right. Uh, so when you think about this radio for 200 bucks, It's an impressive screen for 200 bucks. absolutely. Yeah. Do yeah. you use the volume knob on it? This is one of the few radios we sell that has a, has a volume knob. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. <laughs> it's nice yeah. to have that on there, for sure. Sweet. Uh, part of your installation, including installing an amplifier mm -hmm. uh, and a subwoofer, this is the amplifier we went with, the JL Audio 250-1. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a uh, mono sub amp, and we're using this to power the kicker sub that's sitting in your trunk. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever installed an amp before? No, that was the first time I've done that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was, uh, was it more difficult or easier than you thought it was going to be? Um... Hard to say because I had so much help from my training class. Good answer. Especially Dylan. <laughs> Shout out to Dylan. <clears throat> Very professional installer. Um, he, he really helped me. Him and Josh really helped me with this. I was kind of sitting there telling them what to do, to be honest. So. Nice. You took on a supervisory role. Hey, this is my car. Here's what you're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you did. We had five trainees uh, plus myself sort of all working together mm -hmm. to get this amp installed. And uh, when we started looking at running the power wire, right, when you install an amp like that, you have to run a power wire from their battery all the way to the back of the car. We put the amp in the hatchback area of your Mazda 3. Yep. Uh, the question is always, how are we going to get that power wire through the firewall? Yeah. And uh, we figured it out. Uh, there's uh, usually like a factory wiring harness and a, like a rubber grommet. You can cut a hole in that and run the wire through there. Mm -hmm. we were, it was, that was hard to find. Mm -hmm. um, but what wasn't hard to find was right behind your glove compartment, which came out in like five seconds. It was, it was easy to remove that stuff and the pocket and get in there. You could actually find the metal that makes up the firewall. Mm -hmm. And there's a nice flat piece of metal with like this round flat area, like almost like it, they put it there just in case they were going to put a factory harness through that part of the firewall. I was like, that's a great place to drill a hole. We double checked on both sides to make sure that there was no, we weren't going to drill through anything important, mm -hmm. wires, pipes, tubes, gas, gas lines, anything like that. <laughs> uh, found it to be totally clear. Drilled a, uh, it was even easy to get the drill in position, which can be challenging. Uh, running the firewall, running the wire through the firewall ended up not being hard at all on mm -hmm. this car. Mm -hmm. uh, we grounded the amplifier to your seat bolt in the back, and uh, and you guys did a nice job of running your RCAs on the driver's side and your power wire on the passenger side, mm -hmm. which is important. Do you remember why that's important? Because uh, of interference. Yeah. 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 Power wires being too close to the uh, RCA wires uh, can add noise to your system. Hey, there's your sub and amp installed in the trunk. Yep. There's you operating the radio. <laughs> so this is kind of us uh, looking at it after the installation is completely done. <laughs> I think you're sitting I was there. there. Hey, there's my dog. I was vibing. There's Scherzer. Sure. What's up, Scherzer? So, uh, so when it was all said and done, we sort of did an after listening test and we liked it. What are you, what are your plans now? Now that it's all installed, you've had it for a couple of weeks, you're going to continue to live with it, right? Uh, you're probably, if you're like most of us, you're already thinking about what you want to do next. Yeah, definitely. What are the next steps for you? Well, um, first thing is, uh, just securing that subwoofer. Uh, and the amp in my trunk because on install day we actually didn't have time to do that and since I wasn't driving my car so much I didn't bother to do that but it's really important because the amp is pretty consistently just sliding right off of that subwoofer there um, and so I don't want to cause any damage to it so I need to get that secured as soon as I can and I was thinking about screwing the subwoofer and the amp down 
But when it came to actually drill the holes uh, in the subwoofer and in my car, I didn't want to do it. So I'm going to try to use Velcro. Velcro is um, a great way to go. That box is carpeted, mm -hmm. right? So some good, strong Velcro on the bottom of the amp, plop it down on the top of the sub. It's not going to move anywhere. Yeah. Uh, and you're yeah. right, drilling holes, to just even just to screw an amp down to the box. Mm -hmm. and if you don't have to, don't do that. Yeah. You can, right? If you use some short screws so you don't go in too far and hit the back of the speaker or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but you're also drilling into MDF, and so that weakens that a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, better yeah. better to just Velcro it. I like that call. Yeah, that, that that's my feeling too. Um, but then after that, I want to, um, as far as what I want to do with the system, I'm, I want to add a four-channel amp to power the front speakers. Um, which would mean I'll probably lose that center dash factory and the rear tweeters and the the sub and the wheel well. But I feel like giving more power to the four hertz speakers is mm -hmm. going to give me a better sound overall. So I want to do that, and I want to add a DSP too because oh. then you know not then I never have to mess mess with the touchscreen again. I can just do it on my computer or yeah, yeah. And, you, and you'll know how to use it. You're one of the people that you know, knows that stuff, right? So you can use a software that will allow you to just have infinite control yeah. of the sound. Exactly. So beautiful. Let's see what we've got coming in on Facebook and YouTube here. Uh, Christopher said. That is what I do and learn with EQ. Uh, so I think he's playing around with his EQ, learning how that works. He uh, probably sitting in his car playing with EQ uh, alone at night. Mm -hmm. Huey asks, need door speakers for a 2003 Tahoe. Awesome. That's what we do here at Crutchfield. Uh, and um, you should probably call us. Uh, go to crutchfield.com slash contact. Talk to one of our advisors. If you want to chat with them, you can do that. Or you can call them and talk to them. Either way, you're dealing with the live person who can get you the right speakers for the Tahoe. So uh, please take advantage of us while we're, uh, while we're uh, available. Joyce said, I have purchased many products from Crutchfield and love their products. Awesome. Thank you, Joyce. Danny asks, 2013 Honda Civic sedan, any under $600 uh, radio replacement and still use the steering wheel controls? I'm pretty confident you can. Uh, I'm going to check real quick on my internal computer just to see if there's anything really funky with that car. And, or am I? Let's see. There we go. All right, 2013 Honda Civic. Might have some follow-up questions for you. Uh, did you tell us what kind of Civic it is? 2013 Honda Civic sedan is all we know. So there's a couple trim levels there. We need to know which one it is. Is it the, is it the EX? Is it the HF? Is it the hybrid? The LX? The SI? There could have been several different Civics. Uh, let us know which, uh, which your Honda Civic is, and uh, I'll give you a ballpark figure. And also, you should consider calling live uh, to an advisor uh, who can definitely help you. They'll look your car up just like I'm doing here and can get even uh, more specific with you. Nick asks, on vehicles with volume that auto adjusts with speed, is it better to have that setting on or off? Feels like a Cat's 22 because with it on, seems like volume is louder, but only to halfway, then it won't get any louder. Off when volume starts way louder, but you can raise it to max aloud. That's a great question. Are you familiar with that feature? Yeah, I think my dad's car has that. Yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. it, 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 uh, it detects, it, it's looking at the computer of your car, it knows the RPMs of the engine, it knows when it's accelerating and the engine's getting loud, turn the radio up. And when you're stopped at a stoplight and the engine's just barely idling, it turns the radio volume down. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would say to me, it sounds like you're, you would probably rather be in control. Total, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. Nick, I would suggest you turn it off. Uh, and all that means is you have to remember where your volume was set when you get out of the car. I have this problem every morning. <laughs> Sometimes when I get home at night, I remember as I'm jamming music after I got home, I remember to turn my volume down yeah. so that when I get in in the morning, it's at a morning volume right. and not a night volume. <laughs> uh, and sometimes I forget. So when I get in in the morning, it blows me away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you're in total control um, and you'll get used to that. You'll find your rhythm uh, with setting your volume where you want it. Uh, but that way you can turn it up louder when you want it to. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I think the auto volume control might be stifling you a little bit. So uh, Ken said, what's up? What's up? 
Uh, let's see, what's going on over here on YouTube? Still wreaking havoc, says four channel amp for the mids and the highs. Thumbs up, makes sense. Bruce says, I have the Denon AVR S760 receiver with Heos. Use it all the time. Question, when streaming movies or shows, is the sound better from the apps in the TV itself or through a device like a Fire Stick? Uh, great question. There sh uh, depends if your TV is a newer TV or not. The newest TVs, uh, if you have them hooked up to your home theater receiver using HDMI with ARC, enhanced ARC, that's eARC, should be the same uh, through that or a Fire Stick. Uh, because you'll be using the D to A conversion and the processing of the surround sound all takes place in the home theater receiver rather than in the little Fire Stick or in your TV. So you should, it shouldn't really be different uh, depending on you know, whether it's the TV or the Fire Stick. So uh, if your TV is a little bit older, it might not have all those capabilities and you might be better off using the Fire Stick. And Zach Phillips says, let's go Crutchfield. Shout out to Zach. Let's go. Let's go, Zach. Is there anything else we need to talk about about your car, Tony? Have we left something uncovered uh, or are we good? Um, I think we're good. Uh, did anyone say I look young today? No, they're not commenting on your age today. Did you grow the extra facial hair just to uh, just to make sure that you didn't get that comment anymore? I did. It's just kind of a joke. <laughs> just because so many people said I look young, so I was like, Let's see what happens if I grow it out. No one said it today. <laughs> no, nope, they didn't. So success. Well, played. that's what I'm doing too. That's why I don't want. Pe I, I was all people were always telling me I look so young, and I was like, No, no, no. I need to grow this beard out so you know I'm not. I know how I feel. <laughs> you know how I feel. <laughs> The struggle is real, my friend. Yes, it is. Uh, thank you, Tony, so, so much for joining us here and for talking to us and letting us install a great system in your car. I know that was a major sacrifice no, for you. I mean, I <laughs> wanted to say thanks for having me here and especially thanks to you for hooking it up and helping me get that system. And Well, all the pieces came together at the right time, right? We needed to put a cool system in a car and show it on Crutchfield Live and talk about it. And, uh, and you know, the system isn't a crazy expensive system. It's... Uh, everything we did all at once was like around a thousand bucks, and it's a it's a pretty great system for a thousand dollars. Yeah, so. and I'm so happy I have it because like I make music and I do stuff on that side of it, but I was never too super into car audio. But like this has really got me into that world, and uh, it's so much fun. I can't wait to see what happens what happens next. So, well, yeah. it's hard to stop once you get started. Yeah. Uh, and you're already thinking <laughs> of the next levels and what you're going to do next. So you've got the bug. I'm sure we'll see you again at some point in the future when you've installed an amp and uh, nail, you know, Velcroed down that amp and all of that stuff. So, mm -hmm. Dude, it. thanks for coming on the yes. show, man. Absolutely. Appreciate it. This is Tony. He's a, he's a brand new advisor. He will be on the phones taking calls for the first time in like a week. Yeah. So uh, pretty soon you get, will be able to call and talk to this guy. Give me a call. Uh, along with the rest of our to. training class. we got 10 total new people coming on the phone. So uh, we're all very excited for that. I'm excited to get started. So Sweet. Yeah. All right, get out of here. All right, I'm out. Thanks, man. <laughs> Next up, we have another special guest. Francis, come on over, buddy. We Get over here. I'm come coming, I'm coming. Hurry up. Um, so there's been questions uh, already uh, in the um, in the chat here about Denon Heos, uh, Sweet. or about Denon, I should say, uh, with a receiver with Heos. But Heos is the topic. It is the reason you're here. That's right. Hey guys, you guys might remember Francis. He's been here several times. A few times. Yep. Done some really cool stuff with us. Talking smart mm -hmm. home. Talking uh, Sonos. Today yep. we're talking Heos. That's right. Yep, so Denon Heos, um, they got a few brands that all do the Heos system now. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here, happy to talk about it. So before we get into like the system and the products and listen to some music and mm -hmm. all of that, let's talk about the really exciting part of Denon Heos <laughs> right now, which is that there's a new sweepstakes that starts now. Awesome. Literally this minute, this is when, we're, this is when it begins. Uh, and it is all based on Heos products. We're going to give away two prizes. Nice. $2,000 shopping spree. Oh, boy. Times two. Two people. Two different winners. Each one will get a shopping spree of $2,000 <laughs> to go bit, to go get specifically whatever they want uh, out of Heos products on sweet. Crutchfield. From us, of course. From us. Yeah, that's that's the best type that, uh, yeah. of uh, sweepstakes. That wasn't clear. <laughs> yes, it's from Crutchfield. Uh, so uh, to get entered into the sweepstakes, um, hey, Landon, I'm going to need you to... Oh, you did. 
All right, cool. I need to type in a password. Well, you, you do that. There mm -hmm. we go. Uh, so a sweepstake, that would mean that uh, you get stuff for free from us. <laughs> yes, you do. That sounds great. Yep. Yeah, and uh, we do a sweepstake almost every Crutchfield Live, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, the more you watch, the better chances you are to win the prize. Is that correct? Yeah, it's all about... <laughs> Uh, it's all about watching Crutchfield live. Like that's the purpose of these sweepstakes. Mm. And I need to learn how to type because I didn't type your password mm -hmm. right. You'll get it eventually. I, I know, you. right? I need to remember to uh, move the mouse every few minutes. Otherwise, <laughs> this is the price we pay. Nope. Two times I failed, Landon. You're gonna have to come do it, buddy. I don't want to <laughs> lock us out of come this computer. Come on down. <laughs> And if, I can't copy and paste from this computer to this computer, otherwise I would have done that. Yeah. Uh, so two thousand dollars of strictly Heos enabled gear. Yes. Is what we're doing. Nice. Yeah. So wow. uh, if you are thinking you might want to put a wireless multi-room audio system in your home, you can get a uh, a pretty baller system hmm. for two thousand bucks. No kidding. A, you can get a lot of different products uh, that, for that amount of money. And we're gonna have two winners. They will be announced on our next show. Sweet. So sometimes our sweepstakes go over like show one, show two, show three, and that's mm -hmm. when we announce one. This one's a little faster. Quick um, turnaround. Quick turnaround. So we are announcing it now, and we are announcing the winner on the next show. And at the beginning of our next show, we're going to announce a password or a code word. Uh, not a password. I had Landon's password <laughs> yeah, on the brain. Better not do that. Uh, yeah. Nope. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not going to give out your password, yeah, yeah. Landon. Um, uh, so we're going to have a code word at the beginning of our next episode. You get the code word, you go to the sweepstakes page, you enter the code word, you get an additional 25 entries nice. into the drawing. Oof. And then at the end of that episode, we will uh, the, the sweepstakes will end, we'll tabulate it out, we'll pick two random winners, we'll announce their names during the show. Cool. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. And then after that, we'll announce the next sweepstakes because uh, we're going to do another one. We keep giving stuff away. <laughs> uh, people are entering now. Sam Sweet. online already entered. Nice. Uh, Sam, just in case you haven't uh, figured it out yet, this is the web page you need to get to. It's pretty easy to find. Google Crutchfield sweepstakes. It's the first search result. Uh, and this page, we've been using the same page for all of our sweepstakes uh, over these past several months. If you scroll down, you can see past winners of Bose speakers, Sonos stuff, uh, and more. Um, the sweepstakes for the Heos is right here at the top. Uh, enter your email address, first and last name, agree to the rules and click enter. Sweet. Come back in two weeks, go to this same page, you'll get the code word, enter that, you add, you add increase your chances of winning. So that's what's going on, it's live now. And we thought since we have a Heos sweepstakes, we should talk about what Heos is. Yeah. Uh, and when I think of Heos, uh, of course, Probably the first thing that comes to mind is Sonos, which yeah. is weird, right? You're not alone. No, uh, you're not alone. And that's because Sonos got this whole category of stuff started mm -hmm. years ago. I think it was like 2004, 2005. We started carrying Sonos. We didn't get it at first. Jeez. I know. We didn't. We didn't know. We didn't understand the power of a wireless multi-room audio system. Mm -hmm. um, Sonos took off. And it wasn't long before many other companies thought, you know what? That's a really cool idea. Mm -hmm we should try to do something like that because clearly it's what people want to do. They want to be able to walk around their room or their house, uh, control their music on their phone, uh, play whatever song they want in whatever room they go in at whatever volume they want. Mm -hmm. uh, they want sound for their TV, They just speakers outside, right? And, uh, and for a little while there, Sonos was the only game in town. Yep. Several other companies tried uh, to figure this out, uh, including Heos. Uh, many companies did not succeed at figuring it out. Many, many companies many did, did not succeed. And we don't even need to worry about that. We won't talk about them, yeah. Heos is a company that did figure it out. That's right, yeah. They figured out how to solve a lot of those same problems that Sonos mm -hmm. figured out. In addition, they figured out some solutions to stuff that Sonos doesn't do. So Correct. they've sort of, uh, you know, uh, come up with their own niche uh, mm -hmm. in this world. That being said, Francis... You've set up a Heos system recently. Yep. Uh, what do you think? How does this work? What do you want to talk about with as far as Heos goes? Yeah, sure. Um, I guess before we dig into it, because I'd love to talk about what I specifically think Heos has that Sonos maybe doesn't. Yep. Um, 
you know, this whole multi-room audio system, we talked about this a couple weeks ago with, um, with Sonos as well. This was a solution really that only was available for uh, very wealthy people. This was typically uh, universal remote control is kind of the industry a lot of people talk about at URC, where you've got tons of speaker wires run in every room of your house and you have control pads that are proprietary to a system and you spend a monthly fee and, and it just goes on and on and on. And most consumers wanted the flexibility of a system like that, but they didn't want the cost of a system like that. And if you're like building a new house, it maybe isn't too bad, but if you're sure. trying to retrofit that stuff mm -hmm. and run wires from your basement yeah, to your bedroom nightmare. and those control panels, you're cutting mm -hmm. walls. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like rerunning the electricity in your house. Right. It's, uh, it's not not fun. It's very expensive, and mo for most people, it's cost prohibitive. Yep. And I think Sonos not only got that, um, but they said we can do this differently. We can do this over Wi-Fi, right? And and that changed everything, right? Because yep. we had wireless audio before. We had Bluetooth, right? Um, and depending on who you ask, um, Bluetooth has never really quite and gotten to its prime time as far as the home audio experience, right? You might have one room yeah. where you got a Bluetooth speaker, right, in your bedroom or something, but as far as it being a real good audio source for multiple rooms, it's never quite gotten there. Um, so with Sonos bringing Wi-Fi, that kind of changed the game. And then about, what, 10 years later, um, competition started popping up. And Sonos held uh, their own for a very long time in that space. And they still are. They're doing fine. Correct. Sonos is doing great. Yeah, I was trying to look at the numbers as far as like market share or something, but uh, the general consensus is that Sonos is definitely leading the pack still yeah. um, as far as multi-room wireless audio uh, with Denon Hios, DTS PlayFi, and Yamaha Music Cast. Those are kind of the... And Blue the, Sound, too. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, Blue there's Sound. Several, <laughs> there's several other competitors, uh, other companies trying mm -hmm. to solve these same problems. Again, many of them didn't figure it out, and we don't have those types of products from them. These companies, Heos, Blue Sound, mm -hmm. Music Cast, and DTS PlayFi, are still here because they've actually figured out how to solve some problems. Yep. They make products that sound fantastic. Uh, the app works pretty good as mm -hmm. far as controlling them and everything. They have it mostly figured out. Uh, and so we're talking about the Heos version of that now. Correct. And while you know we're back to Heos here, there's really one thing um, that's kind of staring us in the face uh, right here in front of me, which is your home theater receiver experience in multi-room audio. Yeah. A lot of companies thought of it as, okay, this is just an amplifier, and you can hook up a multi-room source like the Sonos Port or the Denon Heos Link, yep. right? into the device and then you can play it through your standard home audio speakers, your in wall, your normal bookshelf, floor standing. Um, and, and that was a good solution for most people. So you could use it with your home theater system. Correct, but correct. You had, you had to combine two boxes. You had to have another box yeah. and it was sitting, you know, awkwardly behind it and you know, what Denon and really Sound United, right, their, their parent company with Marantz and, uh, and Definitive Technology, yeah. is they decided, hey, you know what? There's so much stuff going on here from HDMI inputs to the AM FM tuner, which still a lot of customers like to have, um, to you know uh, extra digital audio inputs. You might have a CD player, et cetera. Well, we have Heck, all your these. Table. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there might be a phono, maybe not. Yeah, there's one on this one too. Um, S660, I think is what this is. Um, so you have all these input sources and they're all going to your, your main media center for most um, American consumers, which yep. is their home theater receiver. Well, why don't we use all those inputs as extra sources on our multi-room wireless network, right? So instead of having a separate box that you might have a zone two output coming from your receiver well, Again, we're into running this wires one. up to the other room. Uh, yeah. and, and we still support that to this day, right? There are customers that really do like that mentality of a, of a secondary or tertiary uh, zone from a home theater receiver. Um, but why not just do that wirelessly, like Magic, and be able to share any of these sources, or most of the sources, which we'll get into in a little bit, um, in any room, as long as you have another Heos compatible device. And that, I think, really put uh, Heo specifically in a league of their own. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody else could do that at the time. This is right before Yamaha came in with their MusicCast system. 
And um, so it was definitely really nice. You have a lot of people, including myself, that use their home theater receiver as the main audio entertainment source of their home, right? I've got a smaller town home. I don't need, you know, multiple, you know, stereo receivers throughout my home. This is really it for me. But it would be nice to put a little powered speaker in my bedroom and be able to share whatever music or whatever, you know, the, the big game, whatever it is, is playing on my home theater receiver in that other zone. Sure. Nothing required other than plugging that other speaker into the wall and connecting it to the Heos app. That's my favorite thing about it. Uh, they found a way that to do something that Sonos hadn't, they hadn't solved that problem. Correct. Right. So in the receivers, Denon and Marantz make receivers. Why not mm -hmm. put this Heos technology in there, get it networked on your Wi-Fi, and make it a zone of a multi-zone system. And then uh, let's support it with all the other speakers that you might want in all your other rooms, which is what you see here to Francis's mm -hmm. right. Uh, some powered speakers, yep. uh, three or four different sizes of powered speakers. So if mm -hmm. you just need a small one for the kitchen or a bigger one for the bedroom or two of them paired up in stereo in your, in your den. Uh, we've got sound bars that can go under your TV, uh, yep. sound bars with subwoofers like the one from Definitive Technology. Uh, we've got uh, uh, products that can integrate with your other gear. Yep. So they've got sort of an answer for adding a zone of a Heos multi-room system in just about any room of your house. Correct. So, yep. so now, yeah, like you said, you're playing the big game, you're watching it on TV in the main room connected mm -hmm. to your home theater, and every speaker in every room of the house is playing the audio from your TV. So sure. now, no matter where you go, you're not missing the Correct. action. Yeah, what happens when you you know uh, need another beer or need another drink? You're gonna go into another room and wouldn't it be nice to still hear exactly what's going on? Yeah. Um, and, and that's really the convenience that a lot of customers are asking about now. Um, you know, whether they know the term Heos or Sonos, um, or they think it's you know just Bluetooth, multi-room audio. We get a lot of customers asking about that. This really is one of the best solutions for kind of the hybrid customer who likes the traditional home AV receivers and multiple surround sound speakers, um, but also likes the convenience of wireless music uh, Wi-Fi streaming for Spotify, Amazon Music, et cetera. Um, so it, it kind of is a really elegant solution for this. And we'll we'll get into the app in just a few minutes and actually show you how yeah. you share those sources. Um, but yeah, it's it's great. Let's talk Bluetooth versus Wi-Fi mm -hmm. a little bit yeah, more, sure. right? That's actually something that Heos actually has. Yeah. That Sonos never had. They have some portables mm -hmm. now that have Bluetooth, but um, most Sonos products don't have Bluetooth. Heos products do. Mm -hmm. And I, I my favorite way to use that is if you... Let's say your buddy comes over and he's got a song on his phone he wants yep. to play for you. Are you going to give him your username and password for your Wi-Fi network? I, I don't trust my buddy. And on who that friend is. Yeah, yep. exactly. I don't trust all every one of them, right? <laughs> uh, and so that means he doesn't have access to a system's Wi-Fi, so they can't. he can't go play his music on my stereo. Correct. But if I want to let him Bluetooth to a pair of speakers in one room, we can mm -hmm. do that. So it has Bluetooth and we, that's... We may allow that we, on this friend, yes. Right, yeah. yeah. It, that much he can do. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not giving him my Wi-Fi. Yeah. So. Or, or, I mean, to be fair, he might even have to download an app, right? And once you get to that point, you forgot about why you wanted to listen to the song to begin with. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah, it's it's definitely a more clunky experience. Yeah, he can just go to his Spotify, his Apple Music, mm -hmm. his Amazon, whatever, find a song, Bluetooth it to that speaker, pair it up. Play. Correct. So the reason Bluetooth is very popular, right, is the ease of it doesn't matter what the device is, you take 10 seconds and you pair them, and now you're playing music on that device, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, to go along with what you're saying, Heos um, has a Bluetooth source option, not just for something like a home theater receiver that already has it built in. They include this option in all of their powered speakers, yep. all their sound bars, et cetera. So they're really encouraging customers to have that convenience that don't necessarily uh, have to open up an app on their phone, connect to a Wi-Fi, you know, it really take time to get to know the system. You can simply go there and stream music to one of your speakers. To take it even further though, if there is a music streaming service that Heos doesn't support yet, um, some people might know what Apple Music is, for example. Um, they, I've heard of that. Uh, some people Some have, people yeah. know what that is. Yep. Um, Fair to say. <laughs> 
you know, the Apple Music wireless uh, streaming experience for kind of the multi-room experiences is, I don't wanna say locked down with Sonos, but definitely Sonos is their preferred vendor, if that's fair to say. Sure. Uh, so you do not have native Apple Music support when you're using a uh, Heos system, right? So for those iPhone and Apple Music subscribers, doing Bluetooth from that app is really one of the best ways to get music from your favorite streaming service sure. through the system. And what you're seeing here is the Denon 550 soundbar. The 350 is a powered speaker that is big yeah. and full bodied. Uh, we were listening to it here earlier. Oh my gosh, it's I couldn't massive. believe how great it sounded. And then at the far end there, that's the Definitive Technology soundbar with powered sub. Uh, mm -hmm. So you would connect that to your TV and that becomes a zone of your Heos multi-room system and makes that TV sound great and makes whatever's playing on that TV available to the to rest. all your other speakers. To the rest of the rooms in your house, wherever you, you have the 150, the 250, the 350, these small powered speakers mm -hmm. or your home theater receiver or your uh, a Heos amplifier to power your outdoor speakers. I mean, you really could put speakers just about everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the last thing about Bluetooth too is it's not just an individual speaker connection. Once you are paired to any of these Heos products, you can share that Bluetooth source with the other speakers. I think, so it, it is really nice. I think it way. might be time to show the app. Let's do it. Let's uh, do it. Because uh, that's really where you know your interface, like once you have this stuff installed, you don't think about the thing itself. You hardly ever touch these powered speakers. You're gonna go to the app on your phone. Uh, we're gonna show it to you here on an mm -hmm. iPad so that you can kind of get an idea. We have several of these uh, set up, so we've got multiple zones of Heos mm -hmm. right now on, ready to go, and Francis is gonna control it from yep. this iPad. The stone had drop which said is, iPad. Which we, I think uh -huh. we have set up so the camera can see it, but it's hard to actually see it. Mm -hmm. I can see it pretty good. You want me to do yeah. some stuff? Uh, sure, yeah, and, and once we get on the other camera, we can probably show it a little bit better too, but um, just kind of generally speaking, most of these apps um, have uh, the same thing, just in a different little flavor, right? Yeah. So you've got your music sources, which is right here. If I can do this, I'll be impressed. All right. Look at that. And so this one just shows you, I've actually edited this source page, we'll call it, um, to the music that I subscribe to, right? So I've, I've got a title um, subscription. I've got a Spotify subscription. And then you can see if I have music that's on this iPad, I can use that as a source. I can connect it to a music server. So if I had a uh, you know a server on my Windows computer, for example, with a bunch of music on it, I could access those. And then the one of the best parts about this is your inputs here. So this is inputs on a Marantz home theater receiver. Again, Marantz is a Heos enabled product. Um, most of their stuff from about 2017, 2018 and newer uh, will have this feature built in. And this receiver is literally 100 feet away in a training room. <laughs> You're right, uh, same, same Wi-Fi network, It's right? on the same Wi-Fi network, which is why this app can see it. We don't have it on display here. It's not this receiver, it's just a Marantz Heos enabled home theater receiver. You got it. So TV audio would be the uh, eARC or ARC input of that one, right? You have all the HDMI inputs for these. You have uh, aux inputs, the analog inputs, the tuner, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So your receiver, uh, or I, I say your receiver, I know it is your receiver. Yeah. Um, from the training room uh, was what seven years old now. Yeah, no, it's, um, we've had it for quite a while, and, and it's a monster. You know, it's a really, really nice receiver. One awesome thing that Heos has really done uh, recently with their Denon and Marantz home theaters is, regardless of how high of a tier you go in their home theater receivers, you're now able to access literally every input on the back of your receiver. This did not used to be the case. Um, so my receiver, my Marantz, is not a 70 series one. It's it's a 50 or 60 series one. Yeah. And from around the same year, and I just can't access all those inputs. Um, gone to those days. So even with this Denon receiver that is actually right um, under the iPad, this is, I believe, the foundational receiver for Denon. Um, it's a $500 receiver. And this one has all the inputs enabled through the HEO system. So uh, really, really good value proposition considering it just as a source for all these inputs to share on your wireless system, you don't even need to hook this up to a TV for it to make a lot of sense as a really good source unit for your HEOS uh, wireless system. 
Um, so yep, JR's yes. got it right there on the laptop. So, so yeah, four ninety nine. I mean, that's that's incredible. Yeah, so that gives you Heos in your home theater. It powers your surround sound system, connects mm -hmm. to your TV. Uh, a lot of people would have a turntable plugged into that so they could listen yeah. to records, maybe a CD player if you're still doing that. I mean, really, you got plenty of inputs on the back. You can plug in just about anything, your game console, your cable box, your TV, your streaming device, whatever it is. All of the audio from any of those sources can now be sent out over the Heos. It can be chosen as a source on the app. Correct. Yep. And while we're in the app here, if you guys want to get back to this screen. So on the other options for Heos, this is going to be our rooms, right? So they break down your individual Heos devices into separate zones of audio. Again, very par for the course when it comes to wireless multi-room audio. Um, and in this case, we've got three unique, oh, maybe two unique um, sources. That one just, <laughs> it's gone. Um, so to choose from, right? So what, what did we lose, the Marantz? <laughs> I think it was unfortunately this one right here. So we'll oh, see. Did, we might have bumped the power cable. Oh. That's literally probably what happened. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll get it back in just a second. Yeah. Um, uh, live television, folks. That's right. Um, so nevertheless, what we're looking at right here is the Marantz. I don't know if you guys can see uh, or read this right here, but it's got three zones, right? So that's just a feature of that 7011 receiver yeah, in the it's training like a room. nine channel receiver. Yep. So we can select, you know, zone our, our main zone or our secondary or third zones here by actually just toggling them on, maybe. Yep. So that actually just turned on that main um, zone for that receiver. So if we wanted to, let's say, grab another Heos device from here and actually drag it into whatever is playing on that device, we would literally just drag it and drop it right in it. And now we have actually joined those two zones. So right? now whatever's playing on your home theater is mm -hmm. also playing on that other zone that you just pinched them together. You got it. You got it. So that's really nice. We do also have on the now playing, this is so weird. My, my brain is screwed up trying to go <laughs> left and right with my fingers. All right. So you can also do multiple um, audio control. So if I go and click here, we should be able to access all the grouped zones audio, right? So if you wanted to put a little bit more volume on your Marantz receiver zone versus the kitchen speaker zone, you can do that in real time and edit those um, volume controls right there. You can also drop the group in general, you know, so everything yeah. gets quieter or everything gets louder. Um, so yeah, definitely nice. Again, these are all features that most of the surviving multi-room audio brands um, or systems have done very well now. I'm happy to say um, I have been at Crutchfield during, I believe, the entire Heos uh, experience as it kind of came and we started selling it. Um, and the original speakers were, were good. They sounded okay. Um, I'm definitely happy to say that this new set of Heos products, the ones branded under Denon, are extremely good sounding speakers and they look very nice. They definitely have more of the modern home feel that Sonos has done very well and most of the powered speakers that Crutchfield sells mm -hmm. kind of incorporate this nice cloth and just a little bit more homey looking. Uh, the last ones, um, I like to say they kind of looked uh, spaceshipy and um, weren't uh, weren't extremely um, up there in the spouse approval factor, as we say. So these are definitely a little bit more tame, and they did not tame down on the sound. So I listened extensively to the 251, which is this one right here that I hope we can get back on this setup, um, and the 150, the 350 back here, which I'll grab for a second just for size. Um, so there's a bunch of these powered speakers, the 150, the 250, and the 350, depending on the size room you have. This is the 350 Francis yeah. is holding here. It's the biggest one. It's got the biggest amplifiers, the most speakers, and can fill a bigger room with sound. You mm -hmm. can get away with one of these in any medium-sized room. Easy. Anything yep. larger than that, just put two of them in there, and now you have a stereo pair of speakers. You can do that stereo pair thing with two 150s or two 250s mm -hmm. or a couple 350s. Uh, this yep. is the soundbar 550, so you can put this right under your TV, get it connected to the HDMI, and now you've got a good soundbar. Yep. You can get a the Heos subwoofer. You can match, pair that up with any zone of uh, of, of Heos, 
and mm -hmm. now you've got a full-on subwoofer and soundbar with your TV, and uh, and of course there's the DefTech uh, soundbar yep. and powered sub, um, whole ton of products. We're seeing links to those, all those stuff uh, getting put into the uh, YouTube chat right now. I assume they're going on Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you can go see these actual products. I've got them coming up on my screen. There's a ton of, like, we have 40 different things uh, that all have Heos built in. Uh, and if you want to switch to this, Landon, I'm just going to give you guys an idea of how many different things you could spend your $2,000 on if you happen to win the sweepstakes. Uh, you could get a bundle like this, which would be a full-on home theater system. You could get uh, just the sound bar, plus you still got money left over for <laughs> other sound bars. Uh, you could get a really sweet Marantz CD player that also streams music, yep. uh, gets on your Wi-Fi. That is a Heos zone. So if you want a high-end CD player. adds that CD into the Heos system. There you system, go. And now your right? CD can be played out to any other zone <laughs> of your Heos system. Uh, this is the Heos link, uh, so you can add Heos yep. to maybe you have a home theater receiver or a stereo receiver that you don't want to replace. Mm -hmm. You can add Heos to any a device like that with the Heos link. Maybe you just got a pair of speakers laying around. You could power them with the Heos amp. Yep. Uh, now we get into the, uh, the powered speakers. There's the 150s in black or white. You can match that up with a subwoofer. Here's the 350. I know I'm just listing all the stuff sure. you're seeing on the website. The point is... There's a lot of really cool ways to spend your $2,000. There's a lot of great ways to put Heos in all the rooms of your house and build a very robust, very powerful wireless multi-room audio system. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have quite enough money to get one of these on your own, but yeah. if you couple maybe, this maybe with some Maybe scratch of your, and dent. What are our outlet on this? Uh, down to $22.55 Ooh, scratch and dent. Just throw up $250 or your own uh, buckaroos. There's a little foreshadowing for the next show. We're going to talk about outlet uh, <laughs> oh, sweet. Good on deal. the next show. I like Good. the way you did that. Uh, Marantz and Denon Home Theater Receivers. I mean, yeah. there's a ton of stuff. Absolutely. Uh, and mm -hmm. so you won't have a pro you won't have problem spending $2,000 mm -hmm. on Heos. Uh, do we have the app yeah, going yet? I, I do. I think I, think I was just uh, being a little silly here. So I think I named it Bathroom um, before we started messing around with it. So I think this is going to work. Um, but nevertheless, I did want to show, you can pinch in maybe. Yeah. There you go. And that actually joins all your zones together. So that's nice because as I struggled earlier to drag them and drop them on each other, you can just do that and it's much easier. And then to separate them, you just pinch out. What did, what did we call it earlier? Deep pinch, pinch or unpinch. Okay, We're not yeah, sure yeah. which one is actually <laughs> proper. So... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so as far as uh, now playing, we would just select that speaker, and then I could go into sources and go up to Spotify. And uh, this is our favorite band, this right? This is a great song. Um, I'm glad. I'm, good we, choice we definitely on the like song. this. Um, but nevertheless, so I, if I play here, it's going to play it right through the iPad, right? So we talked about this a little bit when we oh, brought you're, up Oh, because you're using the Spotify app Correct. Right here. So, and this is something that is mm. very normal for most things that Spotify integrates with, This right? is how Spotify did it. They Correct. said Spotify Connect. If you want to play Spotify music on your devices, uh, you're going to allow it to work through Spotify Connect. You open Correct. the Spotify app, hit the Connect button, and if there's any products within the same Wi-Fi or within range, they'll show up there. We, we've got a play. couple, to say the least, at Crutchfield. <laughs> yeah, um, they're all over the building. <laughs> so, nevertheless, so I can go through here. I believe Do any Video of them say Studio, Bill Crutchfield's office uh, speaker? Let's not play okay. him in Bill Crutchfield's office. That would be Why not? Uh, he needs to hear this yeah, song. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Um, so if I now select the Video Studio 250, which is just what I named it on this, it should actually play through my speaker. Now, I can control volume a few different ways if I struggle to click here. Um, so I can grab this and turn it up, which is going to play it. That speaker is now making noise. Let us know if we're blowing you out on the microphone, Landon. Yeah. We're good? Good. Oh, we can go higher? All right, sweet. All right, Landon so says then, crank it. <laughs> so I'll show you a different way that we can do volume as well. So if I drag up and maybe... <laughs> yeah! Wow, that was amazing. This is so impressive. <laughs> All right, um, you can also go in here and change the volume by going to what I showed earlier. So they have their own volume. Want me to do this? I yeah, can, okay, I, go for I it, go for it. Right there, here's volume for this speaker. Oh, actually, go back, to, go room? back to the rooms and then select the bottom room. Oh, yep. yeah, got it. And then go to now playing. There we go. That's it. That's it. We're blowing the mic out. 
Sorry for everybody if I was too loud. But I just paused the music. So even though you we started it. this song in the Spotify app. Thank you for making my point. Exactly. So it, it, a lot of people do complain about that. I think you're uh, notorious for talking about this because you're uh, um, an iPhone and Spotify or in Sonos fan, right? Um, where it's really nice to be able to use the Sonos app and do it right through there. However, once you start a playlist, you don't have to necessarily go back into the Spotify app and control everything. Um, once you also start it there, if I wanted to bring the home theater receiver into the mix, I could do that. I wouldn't have to go to the Spotify Connect and you know go to different sources, etc. Right. Um, but yeah, so that's just a, a kind of a feature set of Spotify where they've just done this really well for a long time. So they kind of like people using their system. Yeah. So uh, so the point of all of this is that. HEOS is a fully realized, really well done mm -hmm. wireless multi-room audio system. They are one of several choices. Uh, we've mentioned the other brands, but this today it's about HEOS. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to show the app that it is, uh, uh, that through, after several years of development, it took them a while, right, to get yep. this app mm -hmm. to the point where it was easy to use, easy to pinch and de-pinch mm -hmm. your zones and adjust your volume and find your music. Uh, it is a fully realized system that uh, is great. And uh, because we because we can, we're giving away $2,000 to two <laughs> lucky winners. We have some questions that have come in. Sweet. Uh, Matthew said, bought all my car audio from Crutchfield. So glad my late uncle turned me on to Crutchfield. We'll never forget oh. in the early 80s when he dropped $10,000 in the store. Oh, boy. Started the loudest, cleanest stereo in a vehicle in the family. He always crushed us. <laughs> nice. Uh, Besker asks... What are the chances of Heos getting Cobas? That's a great question. It is, right? Yeah. So there's all these musical services out there yeah. on the internet, uh, and they all have to uh, sign a deal, right? Correct. These companies have to have uh, agreements and contracts, and sometimes they si sign exclusivity contracts. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they don't all agree on the terms. And who knows? We do not know. We haven't been given any kind of insider information. You haven't, have you? Nope. Okay. I wish I did. We don't I have... love Cobas. That's right. that's also um, one of Crutchfield's, just as far as the advisor's favorite, high-res streaming oh, yeah. services. Um, so it does support high-res music, to be clear. That is a really great selling feature of Heos as well that we didn't really talk about. Um, Tidal is kind of their... I'll call it preferred high-res music um, service that works perfectly through the Heo system. I would love Cobuzz to be added to everything because I really like their system. When they added um, Android Auto capabilities, I, I now exclusively stream music in my car, high-res music right through Cobuzz. It's it's night and day difference. Um, so yeah, and I don't think I don't think I've heard anything about extra sources in the pipeline, but. Um, that's always something that if we get you know news of this, we're going to update all of our product pages, oh, yeah. letting you know that in a firmware update, X, Y, and Z will happen. We'll probably talk about it on Crutchfield Live. I would hope it, so. will, it will be that kind of a big deal mm -hmm. uh, that Cobuzz comes to uh, any other services like that. So uh, we don't have an answer for you other than we're excited for whenever that happens as well. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Is the giveaway open to people outside of the USA? I'm in South Africa and interested... Well, welcome from South Africa. Yeah. That's pretty great that you're watching. Breaking I, boundaries. I don't think I don't think you're eligible in South yeah. Africa. I'm very sorry not. that it's not going to be available there. Uh, is is the giveaway open to non-U.S. residents? I'm pretty sure it's U.S. residents only. If somebody in the back can check out all the fine print, and I'm also sure, by the way, uh, if you go to this page, uh, there's somewhere on here is a link to some, you know, some lawyer. Pros. Some legalese. Legalese, yeah. I'm sure it's here, and I'm sure the details are in there. Uh, oh, yeah. View rules. Mm -hmm. um, we do not have time to read all these right here, but let's see if I can quickly scan. I cannot. So the answer <laughs> the answer is right yeah. there. Uh, it's not exactly compelling content on live to read. Yeah, uh, it's not, not as cool as hearing you talk, <laughs> that's for sure, yeah. Uh, so, uh, get yourself registered for the uh, sweepstakes uh, as soon as possible. Come back in two weeks. We're going to continue talking HEOS. We're, cool. prob we're probably going to have some outlet stock and then some scratch and dent so you can see what that stuff looks like when you buy it from Crutchfield. It's nice. pretty, spoiler alert, it's pretty great. Uh, we've done that before on the show. Mm -hmm. People really enjoyed that. So, Francis, thank you for showing us all the HEOS yeah, stuff. Yeah, thanks for having me. Don't all go things. anywhere.
Okay, cool. Um, I'll stick around. Sweet. Uh, you're going to close the show with me here. Cool. Because uh, the next thing we want to do is take a look at, uh, oh, the poll results. Oh, sweet. We did the poll question earlier, which was, what's one thing you would replace or add in your car audio system? And on YouTube, the clear winner was speakers, mm -hmm. which jives. That makes sense. That's what a, a lot of people think. That is the thing you need to replace because mm -hmm. it's the part of your stereo you know you're hearing. And when you turn the volume knob up and it starts distorting, sounds bad. Yep. <laughs> and uh, if you put new speakers in there, you can fix some of that. Mm -hmm. uh, the next thing you should do is put a new stereo or an amplifier, something to give those speakers more power. I That's agree. actually the biggest problem mm -hmm. in a factory system is not enough power. Yep. Typically, it's a little bit more expensive, requires a little bit more time in your vehicle on that Saturday morning, et cetera. Um, but yeah, I, I that definitely uh, jives with me. Uh, speakers are the uh, the first place we typically like to recommend for Crutchfield customers when they're trying to get more out of their system. If you happen to also want updated functionality in the dash of your car, mm -hmm. putting a new stereo in first and replacing the speakers second yeah. is another great choice uh, because most of the time you will increase the power going yeah. to your speakers. They'll sound better. Plus, you get all the new features like CarPlay or Android Auto, whatever else you might want your new stereo yeah, to Tony have. was also talking about, too, you get more control, right? So, yes. I mean, even just being able to tune, um, you know, Christine just got a, a Honda Fit the other day, new mm. to her Honda Fit. The factory stereo is, is awful. Um, but In a brand new one. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and being able to tune the system or lack thereof um, was probably the biggest frustration I had when we were messing around with it. Um, there's just not a lot to do. Yeah. Um, we talked about a 10 band EQ. We have like a one band EQ <laughs> um, on that uh, system. So yeah, nevertheless. Uh, subwoofer was third place. Yeah. Uh, dash cam or backup camera, only 5% of people yeah. cared about that. Even so. though everyone loves them. Uh, that's surprising to me. But, yeah. uh, <clears throat> Um, all right, so uh, last thing we want to do, uh, we have some Crutchfield hashtags out there. Have people been tagging us? We have not seen these yet, so we're going to take a look. Oh, oh that's sweet. a beautiful two-channel system. 2.1, actually. Uh, that's so classy. Seeing... Is that a Kef Cube um, uh, subwoofer on the ground, too? I think so. Yeah. And are those, uh, are those Martin Logan speakers? Uh, Martin Logan or Warfield? I can't Man, quite see. They we're could not, be we're Warfield. Not doing very well no, this. we're gonna totally. <laughs> we're gonna get They're beautiful. We're gonna get, we're gonna I, I get love, in trouble if I we love keep saying the, the wrong. Uh, I know. Yeah. Shoot. <laughs> I, I love. The I do contrast. see the folded motion ribbon tweeters. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, Are they? Yeah, maybe I shouldn't keep guessing. <laughs> right? Let's Rebel? stop guessing. Are they Rebel they could speakers? Be. What are those speakers? Can you guys see in the comments? I can't yeah. read the comments on this one. Does it say what speakers they yeah. are? Did Francis or I guess this right at all? Yeah. Warfdale. Warfdale. Ooh, you did say Warfdale. Okay, yeah. Nicely done. I will take that win. I mean, yeah. That's a great system. Love the turntable. Ooh. Nice. So Ooh. floating screen. Floating that's screen. Kind of, or is it a floating screen? It's kind of flush mounted oh, in there. Oh, my word. So that might be a... Is that one of the Pioneer like custom installs? Or is that just a really good looking I mean, Halo 9? I or? almost think that's a, I mean, that looks that like a factory it belongs <laughs> in that car. Like it came with that car maybe, but I, I have a feeling it didn't. New Otherwise then we wouldn't be hashtag It here. says new head unit. So that is insanely clean. Yeah, also And I think speakers, I see Pioneer. I, I think that's someone doing an insanely good yeah. um, They've got the modular stereos. I'm uh -huh, sure you see uh -huh. those in training. Yeah, with when the hideaway you talk to box. The incredibly. Um, so the, in the business department, which where I work, we get installers asking about this radio all the time because you can separate the chassis or the brain box from the display. Yeah. So th that if that is what I think it is, that display, um, you know, could be really custom mounted there, and the actual singled-in chassis could be hidden somewhere in the sub dash. So. That is incredibly That's nice. Great looking. install. Kudos yeah. to you guys. Uh, incredibly nice. Good Kenwood amp. Amplifier. High res amp, too. I like it. Good speaker terminals. Oh, uh, check out ooh, the sound, sound ordinance, ordinance component system we installed. We do in like the door. us some sound ordinance. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, and then I see the crossover mounted right there yeah. in the door panel. That's where we did mine. Um, now, I would say, are you are we allowed to be critical of these? At I all? think we're allowed. Are you going to talk about the connections facing up? I am. That's exactly what Look I was going to say. Why, uh, why don't we like doing that? Well, I mean, 
the where where he put it in the door, water shouldn't get to it. Correct. Right? Because it's between the metal and the trim panel that comes off inside the car. Water shouldn't get in there. But right? water but water does but water find its place. Could get in there. <laughs> and if it did, yeah. you really don't want it dripping down directly into where those speaker wires are connecting into those metal terminals. Better to turn it the other way so that if water gets on the wire, it doesn't drip right into that. It will drip right off the wire. A, a drip yeah. loop if you can. Drip loop. That's yeah. what it's called. Yep. So yeah, if I was going to do anything, if you were willing to take your doors apart, I would turn that crossover over. Uh, How funny is it though that his wiring is that clean? It's, um, it look, everything looks so <laughs> nice. I hate to even suggest I think my it. car has different colored speaker wires that are coming off there at different lengths. And so that, that's such a good install. But yeah, the, the drip loop is a real thing. Um, obviously on amplifiers, that would be a, like a huge thing in boats, right? So yep. marine audio, um, that's a scary thing that can get you into trouble. Um, on this one, it's not like it's going to stop his car from uh, driving, you know, if that no. crossover failed. And, and again, um, it's in a place where you shouldn't get water in there. I mean, the, door, the door is designed in a way that that shouldn't happen. But if it does, it could cause a problem. So this is the same guy. Oh, my wow. word. Well, speaking of marine audio. <laughs> I think this is a Jeep. Is it? Right? We're on a boat. I can't. I can't tell. On a boat? On a Jeep? Is it on a trailer? I don't know. So those are. Wakeboard are those tower speakers? Wakeboard are they tower speakers, the big ones, or are those subs mounted in a in There an could enclosure? be some subs in there, plus some of them are I'm lit sure up. I'm sure that some this are. is um, relatively loud, I yeah. would say. Yeah, yeah, there's got to be I'm sure that the people 300 feet in front of him <laughs> uh, can hear this better than he can um, from the... Uh, from if, the past, if he can still hear. That looks like a dome light, right? Like he this or is she, inside of a me. vehicle, right? This is a Jeep? Y yeah, probably. that's got to be the back seat taken out. I think is you're that right. what we're looking at? I yep. think that's what we're seeing here. That is one of the cleanest um, installs of Jeep Wake Tower speakers. Yeah. I've ever no, seen. I mean, if you're going to overdo it, this is how to overdo it. This is great. <laughs> I love and, this. And I hope he's got LED channels. So he's got the left speakers on their own channel and the right speakers. Yeah, and maybe at the time this picture was taken, something was playing yep. on the left speaker that wasn't playing on the right speaker. It was stereo music. That would be and cool. And so only the left speakers were lit up. If it's done right, that is yep. that is so cool that looking. Is, Love it. That is pretty incredible. We got yeah, any great more? Great install. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That's just very a clean. solid, That's clean install. That's a Ford, install. if I've ever seen one, right? That's that the, ver looks very Ford yeah, to me. They yeah. have a very good dash kit because I believe that is probably using the Maestro dash kit, um, yes. which is specific for those Ford vehicles. Yep. Um, I hope I'm right on Ford. I think I am. Um, but you swap over all the HVAC controls, et cetera. It gives you all your vehicle settings if you have an iDatalink compatible radio, and that is extremely clean. That's what I wish every dash kit looked like, to be honest. Um, oh, it's, it's a, a Nissan. Nissan. Well, I was not close at all then. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, but yeah, dash kits like that, as far as the HVAC controls, where they're all integrated, I think is what they call them. Yep. Those used to be incredibly hard to replace, and thankfully we have come a long way. Great solutions for yeah. that now. Uh, I'm going to check out some comments on YouTube here real quick. Uh, Bruce says, I hate my stereo in my 2020 Ford Explorer. Yeah, yikes. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, even though it's a 2020, it probably has some upgraded nice features, right? Sure. That, that factory radios didn't have 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't mean it's great. Correct. Uh, it means it's it means it's factory, and that's still what <laughs> it is. Uh, Vanit Verma says uh, RXA 2A or RXA 4A. I believe those are Yamaha mm -hmm. home theater receiver yeah. models. Yeah, the Avantage series. Yes. Uh, I would, uh, I would, I would one up you on that. Uh, is it Vanit? Uh, I would go RXV six A. Yeah, yeah. Um, Spend more money. It, well, it's a, <laughs> it's so much more. It's more power per channel. Yeah. Uh, and it's got dual room, dual source. Yeah. I mean, you can do seven channels instead of five. I mean, there's a lot more going on with the six. Yeah. That's really the sweet spot in Yamaha home theater receivers right now. Uh, let's see here. Uh, somebody commented a few minutes ago that we were killing their ears. Uh, with oh. The, with the too, we had music oh, okay. too loud. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that, everybody. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Pioneer in a Tundra. New. Okay, cool. Oh, um, well, we got some results on the poll from Facebook pretty much mirroring what we saw on YouTube. Yeah. So, yeah. Speakers first. Cool. We got good speakers that can do mm -hmm. that. Uh, I think we're at the end of the show, Francis. Sweet. Is yeah. there anything else I've missed, everybody? No? We are good to go. Sweet. Uh, thank you big time to Tony for coming in. Yeah. Thank you to you 
for coming in and killing it and operating an iPad from behind. <laughs> that was I'm fantastic. I'm very impressed with myself. <laughs> but, um, yeah. You should be. And you're humble, too. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, our next show will be in two weeks, Thursday, August 11th. <clears throat> That's when the sweepstakes ends. That's when we're giving yeah. away two $2,000 uh, sh shopping sprees for Heos products. Come back, get the code word, get more entries, find out who wins, and uh, we'll be talking more Heos stuff then. Sweet. Thanks yeah. for watching. Have a great one. Have a good one, guys.